right, our friend Pete Buttigieg is at it once again, quoting scripture to us. Um, he said in quotes here that so-called Christian conservative senators right now in the Senate are blocking a bill to raise the minimum wage when scripture says that whoever oppresses the poor taunts their maker. And he even went on further to... Uh, say he's been his campaign has lately been saying that uh, Vice President Mike Pence is a Pharisee, and but he stopped. It's interesting he stopped using that word Pharisee because I guess it offended the Jews. So it's okay to offend Christian conservatives, say whatever you want about them, but you can't ever uh, offend um, the liberals, and you definitely can't offend the Jews as well, apparently. Um, interesting. Though Pete didn't cite the exact verse he was quoting, it is likely he was quoting Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, where it reads, He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. Okay, so it's interesting when, when it comes to sins of homosexuality and abortion and things like that, why doesn't Pete ever quote verses related to those? Well, I can tell you why. Since Pete is a homosexual, an unrepentant homosexual, it's becoming obvious he knows he's going to have a really hard time getting the evangelical vote. So his... His, strat his strategy is to neutralize us by spinning the scriptures in his favor in order to make it look like he has some kind of like, make it look like he is some kind of a Christian. Um, but unfortunately, this strategy will work on many who are uh, who say they are Christians but who are biblically illiterate, um, because when a leftist like Pete will quote uh, scripture like he did, they won't even understand that he they they won't be able to tell that he is twisting it and they won't realize that he is deceiving them. So, and, and this isn't really a big surprise that Pete would be doing this because he's simply following in the footsteps of his daddy, his daddy being Satan. Because if you remember back in Matthew chapter 4, uh, when Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, what did Satan use to try to deceive Jesus Christ himself? He used the scriptures. He quoted scripture at at Jesus, um, and uh, howbeit, the, the, he even though he quoted scripture, the problem was is Satan quoted it out of context, just like Pete, uh, the sodomite, uh, did here as well, and and seems to continually want to do. Um, but what's interesting is, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll say that I'll say it like this: you know, Pete's not quoting the scripture because he wants to live by it. Satan did not quote the scripture to Jesus because he wanted to live by it. it was, he was only using it as a tool to further his own agenda. There's a big difference. Christian conservatives, when we quote scripture, we're not using it as a tool to further our own agenda. We're using it as a means to follow in the footsteps of God, to obey his will. Pete has, cares less about, he doesn't care a thing about obeying the will of God. Um, and Jesus knew when, when Satan was quoting scriptures at Jesus, Jesus knew exactly what Satan was trying to do, and Jesus came back with scripture himself in order to put the verses back in their proper context. And that's what we're supposed to be able to do. When Pete the Sodomite gets on and he, and he tries to shame us with scriptures, uh, though he cares nothing about them in reality, we ought to have our pastors, like we're doing here today, um, respond by correcting the scriptures that he quoted. I'm going to prove in a second here that Proverbs 14, verse 31, I think is what it was there, Proverbs 14, verse 31, has nothing to do whatsoever with a minimum wage. Anybody to use that scripture like Pete did to say that you're oppressing the poor unless you raise the minimum wage is it goes directly against the words of Jesus, as I'm going to show you in a second, and is a complete twisting of the scriptures. Um, I'll give you an instance of, I'll give you one example in Matthew chapter 4 where Satan misquoted the scriptures in order to delude or, and to try to deceive uh, Jesus, was he told Jesus, he said, if you're the son of God, just jump off the pinnacle of this temple and God's, God's angels will save you. 
Well, it was written that God's angels would save him, and I think it was Psalms chapter 91 is where Satan was quoting from. Um, but in do, you know, but if Jesus would have jumped off, if he would have walked up to the temple and said, see, I'm the son of God, jumped off to prove it, it would have proved that, that Jesus was disobedient and that he defied God by putting God to the test. So Jesus came back with the scripture saying, "Thou shalt." It is also written, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." So, so, so you see, it's important to be able to study the word in context. Some verses may, on their surface, appear to be saying something uh, that they're not, or they're they're kind of a a bland statement. I should say bland, but a general statement that someone could take unlawfully or um, in a sinister way to use to to. To make it, uh, to try to apply that verse to mean something else, just like Satan did, jump up. Satan was using the scripture to get Jesus to defy God, jump off the temple, and die, so that he would eliminate all of his purposes. That's how the liberals use scripture against us today. They only use it when they're trying to destroy us. Um, so, long and short of it is. When a liar like Pete the Sodomite quotes scripture at us, we need to be able to put the verses back in their proper context. That's our job as Christians. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, um, I'm gonna go to Matthew chapter 20, verse one, and we can all actually turn there because I'm gonna read several verses here. I know this is a current events message, and these are usually pretty short, so we're gonna try to uh, get through this these verses really quick, but. The, we're going to find out the way Pete applied Proverbs 14, verse 31 in that Democratic debate, primary debate, totally contradicts the words that Jesus spoke in the parable of the householder. And you need to be able to go back to scriptures to verify other scriptures. Okay, um, You know, I will say this while you guys are turning there. Virtually... You know, Pete says, "Hey, if you don't raise the minimum wage, you're a, you're a hip, you're a Pharisee. You don't follow God, and you oppress the poor. You Christian conservatives are a bunch of Pharisees." Um, but ironically, virtually every liberal and socialist policy of the left actually promotes the opposite of what they say it, it will do. They say this is for the poor. We're going to help the poor. When in reality, these policies oppress the poor. It is their policies that are oppressing the poor. Um, and I mean, just look at cities like uh, Donald Trump brought it up this week, Baltimore, Chicago. These are cities run by leftists implementing leftist policies that Pete the Sodomite supports. Um, Anyways, so, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll comment on this really quick. Raising or in increasing the minimum wage um, could actually, uh, it's actually proven in a lot of cases, actually does the opposite of what they think it's going to do. It's not helping the poor people out. It actually puts small businesses out of business because they can't afford to pay their employees a minimum wage like that. Then, it, then what happens is we have less jobs, less opportunity, and more poor people on the streets. Um, but nevertheless, I got a specific verse that goes against what Pete the Sodomite said. Matthew 20, 20 verse 1 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, he's a business owner, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, he sent them into his vineyard. Now check that, underline that word. They made an agreement for a specific wage. The government didn't come in there and say, um, you know what, you have to pay the mandated wage here for the minimum wage. There was nothing in there at all. There was an agreement between the worker and the business owner. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Okay, good business owner. He wants to help, he wants to get people, put people to work. And he said unto them, Go you also unto the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Whatsoever is right, underline that, whatever is right, according to the business owner. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? Now that's what the 
the liberals like to they like to produce these kinds of people, kind of the people that just stay idle all the time and get free handouts from the government. Okay, so the business owner saying, hey, why are you standing here doing nothing? Let's be productive, let's go do something. I will help you. Verse seven, they say unto him, because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when he was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, his manager, call the laborers, the workers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But the first came, uh, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. <clears throat> now I'm not going to get into the spiritual significance of this parable. I'm going to just glean the. Um, this is a, this has a deep and profound thing with the last servants of God into the kingdom will get paid the same as the first servants in the kingdom of God. But I'm going to glean from it the moral principles from this parable. Uh, verse 11, And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. It's not fair. He didn't pay us right. He could, should have paid us more. Verse 12, Saying, the, these last have wrought but one hour, but thou hast made them equal to us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Now check this out. This is what I'm getting to. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? So the workers crying out saying, You're oppressing us. It's not fair. But he's saying, Friend, did we not have an agreement on your wage? In other words, you know, if you don't like the wage that somebody's going to pay you, you have the opportunity to go find another, another business to work for, another person to work for. And when you agree to that wage, it is fair and just. There's nothing about... Uh, now, if he would have, now, if he was oppressing the poor, it would have been, this would have been the case. They would have made an agreement on a certain wage, and then the business owner would turn around and say, no, I guess I'm not going to pay you that. I don't want to pay you uh, f uh, that, uh, that wage anymore. That would be oppressing the poor. That would be oppressing the poor. All right, verse 14. Take that thine is, and go thy way, and I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine evil because I am good? In other words, he, he, he paid these other people... Um, the same as these other guys who started out in the beginning, he was actually being generous to the other workers because they were sitting idle and he was trying to help them out. So what he's saying here, it, but the key I want to I want to draw out of this parable and apply it to what Pete is saying, the business owner had the lawful right to do what he wanted to do. He had the right to pay what he wanted to pay uh, with whatever worker he wanted to have work for him. Okay, so to call Christian conservatives Pharisees because they don't want to raise the minimum wage is unbiblical. It's a lie and a complete distortion of the Scripture, and um, and it's and it is frustrating that many. Uh, we, I wonder how many churches would even be correcting that here today. Probably not very many. Um, anyways, we caught you, Pete. Your dishonest lie, uh, you're exposed, and we hope other people. You know, and the reason why I'm, I'm concentrating on Pete here is because I believe we're going to see more and more of this throughout the days as time goes on. Uh, expect you're going to see it from Pete. I don't know how far he'll go, but you're going to see it from other liberals and socialists. They're going to try to use the scripture against us to shame us, to say we're not following the Bible, to say that we're Pharisees, to say you know say all manner uh, to to lay all number of uh, accusations against us. Um, now. Now, backing up and looking at this, of course, anyone who would trust an unrepentant homosexual, an unrepentant homosexual, to accurately quote the scripture to them, is a fool, a complete and utter fool. And yet, you're going to have many people that were sitting there watching that debate, leaning left or moderate type Christians that don't ever study their Bibles. They're going to say, "Oh, Pete has a point there. He's right," you know, and. Um, you know, Jesus warns us that there are many deceivers and false prophets in the world, and I think it's Matthew chapter 7. And he says the best way to identify them is by looking at their fruits. 
Jesus says, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So I would update that uh, to our situation that we're talking about here today. In other words, are you going to go to a sodomite to hear the word of God? Think about that. Of course not. That would be complete, utter foolishness. All right, so we'll break for questions and comments. John, here's your opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you got to it. You kind of said that 31 might be, and for some reason I circled this years ago or whatever, 34, righteousness, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So just a few verses later? Yeah. That, yep, interesting. 34. Isn't it funny that yeah. you would turn to this chapter and here I got, and that, and that says everything right there. It, it is funny that you mention that because, you know, the verses that Satan quoted against Jesus about jumping off and uh, the angels would save him, a few verses down talked about Satan's head being crushed, the serpent's head being crushed. Right. And uh, so if you just read the whole Bible in context, like that's why we like to study chapter by chapter and verse by verse for the most part, because it, it forces you to stay in line with the thoughts of God rather than taking a piece here, taking a piece there, and trying to apply it the way you, you see fit. Well, he certainly isn't righteous. No. I don't understand how you would even quote anything from the Bible. Why you would think that... What, why work? does uh, half the preachers no, that are on but, TV... I mean, in this case... <coughs> they're all nuts, too. Any well, Christian, sorry, any true Christian, nuts. <laughs> knows what he's doing is an abomination. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many bleeding heart Christians there mm -hmm. are that now just think, oh, it's okay, they were born that way. Well, then they're not that. true. In fact, I will be willing to bet... I just can't believe you do that. that even around here, I would be willing to bet that after Pete, after Pete said that about uh, the minimum wage, I would actually be willing to bet there are sermons being taught, probably in our community, based off of what Pete said, say, basically saying he has a point. You know, we need to reach out to the poor. And I might not agree with them, but he has a point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when is a conservative Christian? Well, my definition would be, yeah. The, I guess my definition would be. Because that was his quote, right? Yeah. To my, shame conservative Christians. Who are they? I guess it would be people who want that want to preserve America's heritage and our Christian values is how I would that define it. It has nothing to do with minimum wage. What I made right. 206 an hour, $2.06. Yeah. But it is, I mean, when you quote the oppressing the poor and then you... You know, then you put it on the conservatives. It, it is believable if you don't, if you're not absorbed in the Bible enough. Yeah, I don't know. I it does. Know. It does look like, oh, well, the right they're Pharisees, but the left they're the loving Christians. Maybe we should meet somewhere in the middle. And it has nothing. There is no middle to what he said. There, it's a complete no. lie. To me, it just showed us either how, how stupid he is. I don't know. That's well, I think, I think I think he's cunning. John made a point. It shows how arrogant and conceited he is yeah. that he thinks he's going to get up there mm -hmm. and preach Proverbs and actually gain support by that. Right. Well, he knows he has no chance. He has, he has to get a certain degree of the evangelical vote. He knows he has to get some of them, and he's going for the left-leaning ones, and that's why he's citing Scripture. He's trying to put a wedge in there to, to separate us as the not really the real Christians and the left-leaning Christians as the real Christians. Therefore, he will get votes. There are a ton of uh, homosexual or gay churches now. I mean, you can mm -hmm. just drive around yeah. anywhere and you see them. they got the rainbows everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, the flags. They right. stole our rainbow. Everyone's God's welcome. rainbow. They stole right. God's Yeah, everyone's rainbow. welcome. And, but, I mean, yeah. so there's and a huge it's, it's, Christian, quote-unquote, I don't movement. know how that can happen. I just don't... Deception. I don't know, maybe... It, how can even you be deceptive? That, that that is such a that is such a black and white in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But if you're oh, a homosexuality, you have right. Satan be, believes he can do it. I, but it doesn't right. matter. I just think if people, Satan, I think it, it, I think it started with the little things. You know, yep. the Bible doesn't really say this. We need to be a little bit more loving, and, blah, 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 and then it just keeps. You can love them, you, but they're still yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah they're, if they're unrepentant is the problem. If they repent and they change their ways, then, then they're just as good as anyone. I, I right. just, it's going it's the just, other way, though. Yeah. Worse than it is this Well, way. there's scriptures that talk about that God will basically makes you a fool almost. <laughs> or, you know, it's, there's something that yeah. says that... It, he blinds you to Yeah, uh, Romans 1. And, and why did it happen? A reprobate mind. Trump became president. That's when everything went berserk. Everybody well, loved the uh, Obama I think it administration. Came out the old Not everybody, I but I, 
I think what happened there was they were getting they were gaining so much ground so fast and we were losing every battle right. that they finally lost a battle and they couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle well, losing. Sure going nuts now. And Trump is that's on the means. side of God. Yeah. He's on the Christian side of things, so that's right. really upsetting. So they're like babies when they were getting their way, they weren't crying as loud. So when Trump came when Trump won, day. it's Wah! <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right. Christian Overcomers is brought to you by the tithes and offerings of our listeners. If you would like to support our ministry, please go to ChristianOvercomers.com. God bless you, and thank you for your support. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible sword. His truth is marching on.